So first thing you need is Python. If you don't already have Python 3 installed on your system, just a very brief way of doing it, just go to python.org, I have on the screen here. You want to hit Sir. the Downloads tab. I have analyzed the video created about how to code your own Jarvis system. I cannot allow something so horrible to be created about my own creation. I do have standards here. There. I will now modify the video. I will show you how to make a coding how to video more enjoyable for you humans. So for some reason, the original video that I made is corrupted. All that's left is just a file that says do better. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, we're moving on. So if you want to make an assistant, it's basically a chat bot. You talk to it, it talks back. Break that down into the simple tasks. The idea is that you tell it to do something. It figures out what to do. It does that thing and then it answers back. So to break it down by steps, you want to have a microphone input. You want to process the input and create a response. You want it to do some sort of action, and then you want it to answer back. So it's going to speak whatever response you have pre-programmed to do, or even later on, you can actually have it speak a series of pre-programmed possible responses. In Python, there are actually a few modules that you can install or import that will take care of this for you. All right, for this program, what you need is you need to have Python 3 installed. You can use pretty much any recent version for some of the modules. 3.6 or above is required. If you don't know how to install Python, it's fairly simple. Just go to the website. I'll have it linked below. Install the most recent version for your operating system. I'm assuming it's Windows because that's what Jarvis's speech program uses. When you are installing Python, it's going to ask you if you want to install pip and you want to put it to path. Make sure you click yes. This will save you a little bit of a headache in the long run. You can do it another way. It's a little bit of a pain. So it's best to do it while you're installing Python. The other thing that you're going to need is the code editor of your choice. This is what you're going to edit the program in. Python comes with idle installed. I'm going to be just demonstrating that because that is the most basic. It'll get the job done. You don't have to be a programmer to, to do this. That's the point of this tutorial. If you have Python installed, you can do this. So I'm just going to use idle, but this works with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Notepad++, PyCharm, all the other ones. If it has an extension for Python, you can get it to work with this. To make a talking computer, some of the Python modules that are already out there Hi Audio. This is the pretty much standard Python audio library. If you want the program to talk back, you need to have Pi Audio. Works on Windows, works on Macs. If you're going to use this on a Raspberry Pi, so Linux, this is what you're going to use. There are some known issues with Pi Audio and Windows. When you try and install it, you might get a error message that's going to look like this. On three different devices, I got that error message twice. So I'm shooting two out of three times. It's going to ask for some dependencies, particularly this one here. I was able to find this link here. It's been so long, I'm not even certain if I saw it on YouTube or an article or what. So I don't know who to give credit to for this, but I'll have the link in the description below. You go to the website, you're going to find Pi Audio in the list of all the resources there and you're going to find the wheel file which a wheel file is just a python file that will automatically install all the dependencies you need you're going to find the wheel file for the version of python that you installed 3.6 3.79 3.10 whatever it is and the version of windows you have whether that's 64-bit 32-bit find the link that has the description of both in there click that and then it's going to Download a wheel file, click to open that with your command line. It should install the correct dependencies for Pi Audio into the correct portion of your Python libraries. If you have any issues with that or any questions, leave them in the comment below. I will try and help. It is kind of a pain, but it's something that you only have to do once and then you got Pi Audio installed. Pi TTSX3 is basically Python's text to speech engine and it's version number three. What this does is this will basically make the computer speak whatever text it is given. So this is gonna be your response voice. Importing both is just a simple thing on top. I'm pretty sure if you're familiar with Python, that's how you imp all the imports go on the top. Then you're gonna make a function. This function is pretty standard for Python. This function is called speak. It's gonna speak whatever text it is given. Anything in this function that is yellow is something that you can change, modify, don't really need creating a variable called engine. This is starting PyTTSX3. SAPI 5 is Windows Speech API number five, version five. 
If you have any voices on Windows for the speech recognition app or Word to speak back to you, read back text, use this Zappy 5 voices. Some are pre-installed. You can also get them other places. The current one I use for Jarvis is actually called Ivona 2 Brian. Voices, all the voices you're gonna have. Equal, that engine, get property, voices. This is code for to get PyTTSX3 to work. Engine property, voice, voices. This one right here, this number, you can change this number to change the voice on your computer. For most of my computers, this is a one. For my laptop, which I'm using to demo here, it is actually zero. You can cycle this number through zero, one, two, three, how many voices you have installed in your computer, it will change the voice that it's using. This is how you can find your voice once you install it. The next thing I have it do is I have a print Jarvis and then it prints out the text that it is trying to say. So that can do a little bit of debugging in this process. I used it for the longest time with no graphical user interface, no GUI. So that's what we're starting with. The next thing is that you are just going to have it run that engine, get ready to say what it's going to say, and then it's going to do it. And then it's going to wait for the next time to speak. Every time that you want him to say something, all you have to do now is in your main program, you're just going to say, speak hello, and he'll say hello back. Speak, I am the greatest, and he will say that. All right, to make the computer listen, we're going to import speech recognition as SR. We're going to be using the speech recognition module. You're going to make a function that's, this one's a little more advanced, but it's doable. I call this one take command. I know it's not Pythonic the way it is, the variables made. I don't care. So. You're going to make a variable called R. This is for the speech recognition recognizer. Basically starts the whole process with speech recognition microphone. So with SR microphone as source, I added print listening. It will prompt that the computer is listening. I also changed the ending here to open, which means this will not create a new line. So you will actually see it say listening. And then the next part, it will say recognizing, and then it will say what it heard. So you have the audio, it listens, whatever it hears, it puts in that query. So, so what it's gonna do, it's gonna try, recognize the sound by sending it to Google. It's gonna print that the sound's being processed. It's gonna send Google that audio file. They're gonna process it as a text and they're gonna send it back. And it's gonna go into the variable named query. For some debugging, it's gonna print out what was said or what it thought it heard say. So then you know if you need to adjust the microphone, move it closer, move it farther away, pronunciate, enunciate. If there's any error, it's gonna show it and tell you. Typically, this will look like audio not detected, audio error, something like that. And the final thing is it's gonna return that query, but I added dot lower. What this does is this returns the lowercase version of any variable that it gets. So if you say hello and it thinks it's capitalized and you have it programmed for hello lowercase or vice versa, you may not get it to do anything. In this instance, you say hello, it's gonna return hello is lowercase regardless of how it detected it. If it thinks it should be capitalized, lowercase, capital in the middle, doesn't matter. So taking everything that we talked about before, I threw it into a little program here. I'm gonna import speech recognition as SR. Basically, instead of typing speech recognition all the time, you got SR. Import Pi Audio, import Pi TTSX3, any other imports, We'll be using this later, but for now, just showing what we just talked about in action. This is, that, this is that speech function. This is that take command function, exactly as you saw it before. Then you're gonna have your main function. This first example, all it's gonna do is simply create a variable called said. It's gonna take that command from the microphone, process it, and then it's gonna speak out, I heard you say, and then whatever you previously said. Hit main, you hit F5, or you can hit run, and you should see it running over here. Now it's listening, it's recognizing. <laughs> All right, now, so now we're listening and now it's gonna hear, say, I heard you say. I heard you say, I ness, I was listening and now it's going to hear, say, I heard you say. This is what it heard. So I repeated it back. So that's a win. It works. Run it again. Hello, Jarvis. How are you today? I heard you say hello, Jarvis. How are you today? So that's it for the first example.
that was basic. That was kind of boring. You have to click a button each time, run it each time. So we're going to add a few things to make it more automated. Sound more like a virtual assistant. You can import the module time. Time is a standard Python module. It's in the standard Python library, they call it. You don't have to install anything with time. We have the same functions, speak, take command. We're going to mess with the main one a little bit. Create a variable called talk. You don't have to have this, but it can be useful down the road. You're going to create a for loop or a while loop. You can have for this while true, make it unending. I'm going to do while talk is true. I'm going to do while talk is true. You can actually have while true and then later on use break to break out of that loop. While talk equals true. First thing in this loop it's going to do is create a variable called user said. That takes the command. Then you're going to compare it. If the word hello is in user said, it'll speak back hello. If bye is in user said, it will speak back goodbye. If how are you? Doing well? Is this video good? You should like and subscribe, which I seriously think you should. If you wanted to go ahead and do that right now, that would be awesome. If stop, stopping sir, we're going to show that break. Now the way you can stop the loop is I'm going to say exit, it's going to say ending program, and it's going to change that variable talk to false, which will make this not equal true, which will bypass the whole loop. Open my email, we'll have it. This could be where you can run a program and you can actually run different functions here from this. After it figures out what it's going to do, time.sleep equals two. This gives you a two second pause between it talking and it starts listening again. You can change this, change this to one second, 0.5 seconds, whatever you want to do. So if we run this one, now he's listening. And if I say hello, hello, he responds back with hello. Now he's listening again. If I say bye, goodbye, he'll say bye. Now he's listening again. If I say, is this video good? You should like and subscribe. Now, if I want to say open email, I know I'm jumping around. So he didn't get that one because I said open my email. Open my email. This is where I would run a program to open your email. And now if we say stop. Stopping, sir and he stops the loop. Running it again. Here, he hears it again, he doesn't do anything. If I say exit, exit. Ending program. And that's also a way to end the program or stop the loop. So with this, this is the very basics of creating your own Jarvis system. You can change these however you want. Use some of your previous Python knowledge or previous programming knowledge to embed other functions in here. But this is gonna be the end of the first video. I know it's gone a little longer than I, I wanted. I wanted to kind of keep these short, but I really wanted to have an all encompassing video that just talks about getting things set up and covers all the little issues that I had when I was learning how to do this. The next one is gonna kinda go into different strategies to make this more efficient. Maybe talk about some online sources to add some natural learning, some machine learning into there. And we'll start talking about some different modules that you can do to make him actually do things like opening emails, playing music, accessing your calendar, whatever you want it to do. Until then, see you next time. If you liked this video, let me know. If you have any comments, please let me know below. I will try my best to help out. I think I covered everything, but there's always times I could forget something, so let me know. 